So you guys have come to the most rocking presentation in the sessions today. You've come to coding, robots, and drones. And I am going to introduce you to us. We are from Pleasant Valley School District, Camarillo, California. Woo! So we have our makerspace guru, Carolyn Alexander. We have Caitlin Fargo. We have Juanita Castro. Ian McLaren and I'm Michelle Cirillo. So we're going to get started. Um, let me go over with you what we're going to be going over today. Today's agenda, we're going to be talking about coding. The first thing we're going to talk about is where to start, how to get that into your classroom, and the first steps you need to take to code. Then we're going to talk about the platforms you're going to use for that coding, and then we're going to talk about what to do once you're done with Hour of Code. We're also going to show you how to use robots, what programs to use for them, and that should let you get a little hands-on experience with the robots, which is a lot of fun. We're going to talk about Makey Makey today and how you'll use that in your classroom and the computer science applications it has for your kids. And we're going to have those hands-on workshops. We're going to have Makey Makey for you, Dash Spiro, and we have Caitlin, who has a lot of experience with drones. You can talk to her about the drones today. So let's get started. Carolyn? Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I have another slide. This is a man who's given us a lot in our technology realm, and we just want to pay homage to Steve Jobs. Everybody in this country should learn how to program a computer because it teaches you how to think. So true. So thank you, Steve Jobs. Now, we're going to start with Juanita, actually, right? All right, we have a lot of kids that are in our classrooms ready to code. We have a classroom full of future computer programmers. So a lot of you might be asking, how do we get started in coding? Coding is important to bring into the classroom because you may have heard earlier from uh, code.org's uh, creator that uh, Hour of Code and coding is the best way to start coding for our students. It promotes logical thinking, problem-solving skills, persistence, collaboration, and communication. So teachers are wondering, where do we start? We start with code.org and Hour of Code. Um, it's really easy. It's designed to be fun for your students, regardless of their age and background. It's accessible to all students. And it just takes one hour of coding to get the ball rolling. And all you need is your students, a computer, and internet access. Let's see what Hour of Code is doing all around the nation. OK, now you're going to press run. <laughs> Your teacher says you guys are into it. We are. It's very awesome. Code.org has partnered with 30 public school districts across the country, including New York, Chicago, and Denver, to provide lessons and teacher training in writing. The largest education events in history. Organizers have set what they called an ambitious goal, of reaching 10 million students this week. Almost 15 million signed up. This week, I'm proud to join the students, teachers, businesses, and nonprofit organizations taking new steps to support computer science in America's schools. I ran an hour of code that's easy to do. I got it. They've been so excited about it. Oh my gosh, it's working. I did it right. They don't even have to be a computer science engineer. Maybe they want to do something else. But in our world, this is going to be the basis for everything that we do. When you're building a program, you have to think outside of the box. If you can change technology, you can change the world. I challenge girls in every single country to learn one hour of code. Every district should do, every district can do it. Please help us get the hour of code to every school and every classroom and every child. And my school's doing it. So 
that's what's happening around the nation. And teachers, I bet you're wondering, okay, how do I bring that into my classroom? And you start with Hour of Code. It's your student's first exposure to simple programming, uh, block programming, and it comes full with tutorials. So teachers, the best part of this is that it, it takes you and your student just watching a tutorial to get started, let's see. In the next hour, we're going to play a game that will teach you the basic concepts of programming. Usually programming is all in text, but we'll use Blockly, which uses visual blocks that you drag and drop to write programs. Under the hood, you're still creating code. To start off, we're going to build code for a program that will help this angry bird move through a maze to get to the evil pigs that stole its eggs. Blockly is split into three main parts. On the left is the bird's maze, where your program will run. The instructions for each level are written below the maze. This middle area is the toolbox, and each of these blocks is a command that the bird can understand. The white space on the right is called the workspace, and this is where we'll build our program. If I drag the move block to our workspace and press run, what happens? The bird moves forward one box on the grid. And what if I want the bird to do something after the move forward on one box? I can add another block to our program. I'm going to choose the turn right block, and I'll drag it underneath my move block until the yellow arrow appears, and then I'll drop it and the two blocks will snap together. When I press run again, the bird will perform the commands that are stacked from top to bottom on our workspace. If you ever want to delete a block, just remove it from the stack and drag it to the trash can. After you've hit run, you can always hit the reset button to get the bird back to the start. Now let's get those pigs. It's drag and drop block programming. Your students can get started right away in your classroom. And best of all, once they're done with their first hour of code, they're awarded with a certificate. And who doesn't love a certificate? I printed out mine after my first hour of code learning with my students. It's really simple to get started. And the best part is the students are really excited about it because of all the programs that are in there. Who doesn't want to uh, do coding with Minecraft where you can code a drone and code a game and in under 10 minutes can, uh, you can create a game with flappy code or you can create a story in PlayLab. All of this can be done and students, there is a student and teacher dashboard and Carolyn's going to tell you a little bit about that. So once you have worked with Hour of Code and you've let them go through those other um, programs, you can set up your class so that the students come back and can track their progress. So there's four co courses. Course one would be great for the littles because it doesn't require them to read. It is more with directions, um, direction arrows, so that they can tell which way it needs to move. Course two and three are great for ages six, six and up. I think eight and up also. And so normally our second, third, fourth graders start with either course two or course three. And what's nice is that you have control in your teacher dashboard to say which course they're in. So this is what they would see if they were in a course, and it lets them know where they've left off. So like stage one is an unplugged activity. It starts with a video or gives them a paper um, activity in case um, they want to start that way. And then those circles get colored in as they complete their tasks. So when they come back the next time and log in with the course code, then they can see, oh, I left off at four or five. And then they also color code by if they completed it or if they really did a great job. There's two different shades of green to let them know how, uh, how well they did with it. And this is an example of the dashboard. So you can see that you can have multiple classes and they stay in there because just because your class is over, once they have their course code, they're going to want to go back in and keep going and working at home. So you can start a new uh, class that way. And once you move past that, there are other applications. So maybe if you're an iPad, Classroom or Chromebooks, you can, with internet access, go with Made with Google, and that one has a focus for girls. So they'll have some, um, some more that are like fashion design. They, during December, had where you could change the lights on the White House Christmas tree. And Scratch is great, it's from MIT, and that will show you more later too, but that is a very open kind of Scratch. So you can, um, the possibilities are endless there. And then Tinker. And then if you go to iPads only, Scratch Junior is great for the littles. At Blockly from Wonder Workshop, we'll be showing you more later. That one is excellent. And then um, Tickle is also a fabulous one that works across many different robots. 
And Caitlin's going to explain how we do code clips. So if you're anything like myself, you're probably wondering, when am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? I have so many other things that I have to be working on in the classroom. But it's quite simple. In our school district, we actually have implemented code clubs. And it's a designated time when students can come together and they can work on their coding skills together with teachers or outside volunteers. The code clubs can be done after school. They can be done during lunchtime, in the classroom, maybe computer lab time. And at our school, we're actually um, using Google CS First. It's a free online program, and we decided to choose this one. Last year, we did Hour of Code. We did Code.org during Code Club, and we wanted something different. And Google has made it you know, different and easy and fun. Um, all the materials are free. They are online. It's geared towards students from fourth to eighth, eighth grade, but right now we have a Code Club with third graders, and they've just taken off, and they're running with this. In Google CS First, there are eight different courses you can choose from. There's storytelling, fashion design, art, friends, sports, music, you name it, they have it. And it starts from really our basic, basic coding skills with Scratch, and it goes on to be more advanced. And in the courses that you can choose, there are different activities. And there's eight of them. They're around an hour each. And there's um, activity one, so you just check it out. You get the hang of things, activity two. So the way we've spread this out is it's eight different meetings, and they have an hour each meeting where they can work on their projects, and they're awarded a really nifty sticker. When they're done, they put it in their passport, and they are having a field day. These are the materials. It's really easy to get started. You log into Google CS first. They say it takes about three weeks to get your materials. I signed my class up last week, and I got the materials within three days. So I'm a teacher that's doing an after-school code club on Mondays with Carolyn. But then in my classroom and in Juanita's classroom, we've decided that during computer lab time, we want to offer coding. It's an essential skill that students need to know. And we are choosing fashion design and sports. And the kids get to choose which one of these two they want to work on. And then I will take the fashion design students, and she will take the sports students, or vice versa. But... Um, we're going to get that started after spring break, and we're really excited to incorporate those skills into the classroom and let them have some say in what they're actually working on. And then I'm going to pass it back to Carolyn, who's going to talk about going beyond coding and bringing robots into the classroom. Okay, so my second graders were doing amazing in the um, code.org ones, but you could tell they were kind of like, okay, that's on the screen and where's the real world connection? So we were very lucky to be able to get Dash to come into our classroom. Dash is right here. You can tell that he turns to voice, so that's why he's been moving while he's on stage, is because he looks to see where the voice is coming from. Um, but there are other robots out there that you can use. Uh, we call him a he, it could be a she, but you just kind of get bonded with him and he's a buddy. Um, can you go back? Oh. So these are examples. So we'll go through some of them, um, but B-Bots are down in the bottom left corner, and I know they are in the exhibit hall, and there's an additional uh, blue bot, I want to say, that, um, that we were checking out yesterday. Ozobots are in the middle. Sphero is in the top corner. And then the drones were on the bottom. So, okay. So B-Bots, they work with mats. Uh, again, they're really great for the littles, working with the direction arrows, just like you would see in course one of code.org. Um, that's right. And then Sphero, we, um, we have Sphero 2.0, and Sphero comes with its own app, but we prefer, and we'll show later, the Tickle app, because then that brings the coding in with Sphero, and I know um, Sphero is always evolving and, and adding new things on, too. And those are the, uh, yeah. Uh, it's okay. So, um, Ozobots, and then they have Ozobots minis. Um, in the... The first set would work by color. So you would have a color path for it to trace. It would use red, green, blue, and black ink. And so markers, they could um, make paths for them to follow. And now they are where you would be able to um, coat them. And then the drones. Also, the parrot mini drone and the jumping drone, we use the Tickle app for. It's like my robot when I have this. <laughs> <laughs> and Ian's going to let us know all about Dot and Dash from under workshop. Yes, that was loud. 
Uh, Wonder Workshop is the creators of Dot and Dash, and Dot and Dash, or Dash and I, have uh, coordinated our outfits together, so uh, we're best buds. Um, they are, they've designed their robots and their apps geared towards elementary school students. And um, what we're looking at down below are five different apps that they have developed. Um, the Go app on the bottom, bottom left is uh, the, just the traditional, it works like a remote control device, gets the students familiar on the basic controls and the basic features of Dash and Dot. Wonder is their actual, their newest app that they just uh, released, I think, September of last year. Um, it gives the students a more visual um, interface to interact with Dot and Dash with uh, um, coding the behavior and the interactions. This was actually used um, for their first Wonder Workshops robotics competition, which uh, I believe three of our classrooms, or three grades out of, the, out of our schools in our districts participated and competed in. Um, PATH is the next um, app that starts introducing the basic computer programming language with using a very simple interface. I would say it's more geared for K through three. Uh, the Xylo, as you can see right here, lets the kids program with music and the little features of the xylophone and the little, um, um, what do you call it? Mallet. Pounder, Mallet. Ma the mallet? Mallet. Mallet, mallet. And then the most one that I think we'll be using a lot is Blockly, and Blockly is using that visual drag and drop programming that we're seeing across the board in all uh, the coding apps as well as the, the websites on Scratch. So here's a, a screenshot of what it will look like, look like on an um, iPad or an Android device. So you're wondering, you know, you have all of these great robots, you have all of these drones, like how do we as teachers and educators find and, uh, those great resources to use them in the classroom? Because the Wonder, the Wonder Workshop CEO is like, you know, we want to integrate coding, coding tools into the classroom without daunting them for finding the right resources. So I think Wonder Workshop is doing a great way of trying to bridge that gap, providing the resources that we need as educators to quickly implement them into the classroom. So over here on this website, or I'm sorry, on this page of our presentation, we've provided links for you that's gonna give you great teacher-created lessons and resources from Wonder Workshop. And then, um, I'm not sure, down below the bottom left-hand corner, the Google, or the Goo, a link right here for our resources. But um, if you're brand new to coding and brand new to um, Dot and Dash, I would highly recommend their like 31 page um, instructional guide, the Blockly for Dot and Dash has lesson ideas, gives you the how to get your Dot and Dash connected to your iPad, shows you all the great features of the Dot and Dash, as well as giving you intro coding, as well as uh, content, content related lesson ideas. Over on the, uh, your right is an actual teacher portal that they have developed that's bridging, um, giving you guys the resources to find content-related Common Core NGSS standard lessons um, all at your fingertips. And I, what's really cool about this website that they're uh, actually trying to get um, up and running is they're providing teachers that have the lessons and they're preparing them for their classrooms be able to share amongst the whole community that's connected to their teacher portal. So it's pretty pretty cool uh, resource for you to check out. Here's kind of come kind of uh, some of the lessons that you would kind of come across. They're geared towards uh, math, ELA, as well as uh, science and uh, engineering. Here's the one on robotic storyteller as well as math, how fast or far can uh, Dash go. All of its content uh, standards based, as well as a very detailed, uh, specific uh, information for you to just pretty much pick up and use and um, use with your kids the next day. They also have a Wonder uh, digital publication called Wonder Magazine that in their editions or issues, they have really cool connections on how you can introduce stuff inside uh, the classroom as well as outside the classroom as well. And then tickle up. Um, and also up here, just to add one thing on 
with Wonder Workshop. June from Wonder Workshop is here and she dropped off some flyers too. So if you wanted to have more information to take with you, we'll have these up on the stage. She um, did want me to let you know, last year a thousand schools or classes entered the robotics challenge, which they had starting in October and finishing in December. And this year they're hoping to expand the program to 10,000 schools. So we want everyone to be trying to get Dash um, entering the robotics challenge and they're going to be broken into different grade levels so last time it was a big group and so this time it'll be the more primary and then the older students will be able to compete and they have excellent videos that show the students what the challenge is and then they need to find out how can I make Dash do what they're asking me and then they upload their code so that Wonder Workshop can see how the students were able to do it. So if you want more information it's up here. So tickle. This is the Tickle app. So when you go to the um, Apple store or iTunes, t put in Tickle app, not just plain Tickle, and you will find the Orca Whale, and that's the one you want. And then do, and close out the iTunes store. And these are the devices that Tickle currently is supporting. So you have uh, Star Wars BB-8, who's not in the picture, and then uh, Dot and Dash, Sphero, which is the white, um, Ollie is the one that looks kind of like a can. Then the light blue bean is the one right above Dash, kind of teeny tiny. He is a, like an Arduino. And then you've got the mini, mini drones. And then up in the top corner, or bottom, kind of in the middle, is the light bulb. That's the Hughes light bulb. So you would be able to code your light bulbs at home and with the Tickle app be able to tell it how you want the lights to react. Very amazing. So this is what their interface looks like. It does have a nice look for the older students and it has features that are better for the upper elementary and in the junior high. And so when we do our maker clubs, the junior high students tend to like to use the Tickle app. They, they, um, it has just different features that they tend to, to go towards and they like. But you'll notice also what's really great about Code.org and CS First and Blockly and Tickle is that they stay consistent with their colors of the blocks so that when the student learns it then it transfers so nicely so they know that their their motion blocks are going to be blue or like a blue green and then their control blocks like for their repeats and that sort of thing are a golden yellow um, and then some of the visual things like changing the lights are going to be purple so that just it already feels comfortable and familiar to the students when they even start in a new program and so this is Sphero Spark. And again, works amazing with um, angles. You work with speeds, percentages. Uh, there's just so much you can do um, in the Spark. And we have those up here for you to try out. So we wanted to be able to not only bring these devices to our students, and teachers, but we also wanted our administrators to understand what we were doing in the classroom and what we were thinking while we were learning and working with them. So at, um, at a principal's meeting, we set up these courses and we were inspired by Sam Patterson's Blue Tape Certified blog post. So if you haven't read it, please do. It's a, a great one that inspired us to, to set up the courses you see here today. And so we gave the administrators an iPad and a Sphero and a scorecard. And so you'll see on there we say um, what the par is. And for that was how many times did it take you to get from start to finish? You can't like go halfway and then recode it and then finish. You had to go start to finish and into the basket. So it was tricky. Um, yeah, it was, and you start to see, you know, it's great because to watch the administrators learn it, they are just like our students, and you can see the dynamics of who's going to jump right in and say, give me the iPad, I got this, and I'm going to figure it out, and the others that are like, um, yeah, yeah. So it was fabulous to see that everybody learns kind of the same way, um, and I think now when they come in and watch a class of students learning, they can now draw on themselves going, I remember when I tried to get that dog leg left to work and I had the wrong angle. Um, like one administrator pulled out my protractor and it was like, wow, we can use a protractor for a real thing. And so <laughs> it was just a great way to bring tools that they learn and we say need to be real world. Um, they see, I really did need to know, but that was a 45 degree angle, not a 90. So um, yeah. So then we also wanted to be able to empower the students to realize that these computers are things that they can take control of. That it's not just you buy it 
and you use it, that they can create their toys. And so Makey Makey is an amazing uh, toolkit so that they can become their own inventors and they can tell the computer, when you hit the up arrow, it's gonna go, you know, you can make it make a sound or it can go left. You are choosing what your computer does. So we're gonna show you what Makey Makey can do because they speak very well. <laughs> uses conductive materials. Copper foil tape with uh, aluminum foil stairs. Hi, I'm Jay. And I'm Eric. We're graduate students at MIT Media Lab. We have a dream that everyone is an inventor. So we created Makey Makey to let you invent just by alligator clipping. Alligator clips stuff like bananas to your Makey Makey. When you touch the banana, your computer just thinks you're touching the keyboard. The front has arrow keys, spacebar, and mouse left click. When you're ready for more, flip the Makey Makey over and you've got more keyboard keys and support for the mouse. You can even use the board like an Arduino when you are ready. No programming, no breadboarding. You don't even have to install software. Just plug it in USB. Order your Makey Makey today and start changing how the world works. So it's wonderful to use Makey Makey with websites. You can just plug it in and wherever you would be using your up, down, left, right, space, and click, you can do that. But the real learning and the real power is when you connect it with Scratch and the students are programming things. So in Scratch, you can say when left, left arrow is clicked, this will happen or right arrow. So it uses those arrows, um, but once you let the students know, you control what happens. We have a true-false book that we had where if the answer is, tr is correct, it will play the sound of the animal. It was an animal true-false. So if they're right, it'll make a rooster sound crow or a dog bark. And if it's wrong, then they put in the trombone of wah, 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 and then, but they control that all by the clicks. And so they have the power to now make stuff that other people can play. And so this is, of course, Van Halen, um, six string guitar, just cardboard with conductive foil tape. And then they clip here. And in Scratch, if you Google, or I mean in Scratch, if you, sorry, it's always a Google, right? Um, if you go into Scratch and you put in Scratch, Makey Makey, um, six string guitar, you'll, it'll pull up right away. And then in Scratch, they always have you remix. So you can change things up and make it your own, but it's there for a base. So there's a student from summer school, summer maker club. And so she wanted hers to be more um, like Guitar Hero. And you can see she's got the, the tin foil pads there, but it's connected in through her lap, the Chromebook and she was able to play it. And then these are pictures from our maker clubs. We have them during lunchtime as an open time for the students to come in and work on whatever projects they want to. So the one here on the left, the one thing w that we love with Makey Makey is that it's a complete closed circuit. So if you want it to be a two player, you all have to be connected somehow. And normally you'd have to you know, either touch your partner or wear like a uh, aluminum foil bracelet that's connected. So these girls came up with, if we put one long strip of play and we're each holding the Play-Doh, it's going to flow through all of the connections and through us, and so we can keep playing. Another group of students realized that if they wanted to, they could keep touching their partner's nose, and that's how they did it. So, just fun. 
No, <laughs> but fun and just they understood like I'm making a connection and I'm closing the circuit and now the game will work. And so that's another picture from our maker spaces where they have their monitors. So they can connect their Chromebooks in, but they can have a group working around and be able to see the program that they're working on. And to start off, we were very fortunate to be able to get these things, but we also look to donors choose. Because before you go and you ask for someone to buy you all these things, you kind of want to know if it's going to work and it's really what you want. So donors choose is a fabulous place to put in your projects. And I would encourage you, if you when you do go in, look to see what projects are um, they're currently looking for and maybe what words they're looking for because a lot of times it will be makerspace. I know recently they were looking for makerspace projects, STEM, STEAM, those kind of things. And so, the next, Caitlin was able to get a Lulzbot Mini for our school, and it was funded very quickly. How, how many days? Three days. And so, um, and it was Cognizant helped fund the rest of it too. Yeah. And so there's that. Yeah. Um, so we have opportunities here, but before we have you come up and try things out, we're going to show you Dash because um, that way you can see up on the screen how, how you would code Dash. So while she's setting that up, Sphero needs to, you need to go into your settings on an iPad and you need to pair him. They both work with Bluetooth and so you would uh, pair Sphero in your settings and recognize. Dash is really nice in that you just open the app and I'll show you how I can connect to him. So to get, to get started, this is in Blockly. Nor, when you get started, the blocks are off. This is your event block, that orange block at the top. You want to make sure you keep that one. That's the best one to get started with. But then on the side, you have options for different ways for it to drive, forward, backward, and anything that's a lighter green, you can change. And he measures in centimeters. Then how he looks, look left, right, forward. You can change the lights on his ears um, and on the side. Sounds, he can make sounds, but then also if you click on the lighter color, you can choose a different animal, but you can also record your voice. If you get a block you don't want, you just drag it to the trash. Then these are the controls that have the repeats, the controls, those kind of things. So then you just start clicking like you did in Hour of Code and Google CS First, it's just all the same. You can break them apart. If you need to change the repeats, you can do that plus or minus. So the young students just feel very comfortable and they kind of just know what they need to be touching. You can also run things um, side by side. So it says when Dash has an obstacle in front of him, these things will happen where he's gonna change his lights and he's gonna back up. So to pair him up, I'm gonna turn him on and he's gonna say hello. And the nice thing with Dash is his ear color. And so in that setting that, that Ian was talking about, the Go app, you can change his ear colors. So we are very fortunate in that we have six or seven Dash. And so we change the color. So if I have a student saying, wait, someone's controlling my Dash, I look on my iPad and I say, well, yours says purple, but you have one with yellow ears in front of you. So then we know that they're not connected to the correct one. So I hit the plus sign in the top corner. It's searching, again, Bluetooth. So it's Dash, and the reason we numbered him 78, just if this helps you guys, on the bottom is a barcode, and so that doesn't seem to rub off where sometimes we've tried tape and markers and other things, and so it's the last two digits of his long code, and that helps us know which one we're working with. So you hold it, have the Dash go around, and you're connected. Okay, so it's gonna move forward. So if he listens to his um, program, he should move forward 10 centimeters and should do that two times. We put him on very slow. You can choose the speed, but for tabletop, very slow. You could go very fast, but that wouldn't be smart. Yeah. <laughs> then he's going to turn right 45 degrees, then uh, move forward 20 centimeters, turn, and then he's going to say hello. And then I'll show you what happens with the obstacle in front. So you, in the bottom corner, push start. First 10 centimeters, second 10, turn right 45 degrees, move forward 20. 
turn. And then if he has an obstacle in front of him, I moved him, let's see. His lights changed color and he backed up, which is really nice for the students in the classroom in the maker spaces. If they run into tables or chairs or that sort of thing, you can already program that in so that he's not just bumping into the wall. And yeah. Okay. Oh, you do it. Okay, I'll do it. Okay, so we have dash courses set up down here. Again, we brought 12 dash with us, so there's courses here. There's zigzag blue tape here that you can program him to follow those things. We've got Spheros over here, and then Makey Makey is set up along this side here. And we'll all be at the different stations so you can ask us any questions. So thank you very much for coming to our session.